Bartender, yeah. Um, well, it's an honor, and thank you very much. Uh, you know, when, when I heard the topic was balance, that was the first thing I thought. Well, I, yeah, it's an appropriate topic for a bartender to speak on, balance with all of our measuring and careful crafting of beverages for ladies and gentlemen, day in, day out. Uh, but instead, I want to kind of look at it from a different perspective. I want to explore balance through the bar, but in a completely different direction. When I was much younger, I was incredibly excited at the idea of being a CIA profiler or an FBI, any kind of cool government organization. This idea of using a method of part intuition, part recognition, part catalog, uh, I, I found it incredible that we could get inside of humans' minds and figure out what makes them tick. And I thought it would be the coolest thing in the world. I thought about it a lot. And then I realized that I'd be spending most of my time profiling serial killers and terrorists, and it's kind of a bummer, you know? So <laughs> I didn't really want to dedicate my life to that. And around that time, theater became a big draw for me. This idea of um, taking constructs and, and dramatizations of the way we interact socially these kind of uh, parodies of ourselves and using them to better understand how humans work. And it was a lot of fun. Um, and, and like all people in theater, I found myself in a restaurant job <laughs> because I had to pay the bills. <laughs> and when I got into the restaurant, I have to say my mind was, was blown. I was completely ill-prepared for what I was going to find. Serving people, sating them, physically, socially, psychologically, opened up a completely different dimension of how we look at each other and how we interact with each other. And I fell for it hook, line, and sinker. Um, ironically enough, I guess as a bartender, I am in fact a profiler at the end of the day. I just wear a black apron instead of a black suit, and you know, I still have fun with it. Um, the bar is an incredibly dynamic microcosm. Uh, it's, it's almost like a looking glass into what's going on in the world around us every day. A pulse on, on, on modern celebrations and dilemmas. An incredibly social atmosphere, obviously. And in that social-based atmosphere, we find that any experience that any of us have, whether as a patron, or, a, or a, a, a server of that environment, our whole experience is completely tied inherently to the people around us and how we're interacting or not interacting with each other. There are people that say, well, bars, it's, it's the greatest job in the world. It's so much fun. You just get people drunk all day. You want to talk about balance. <laughs> There's an interesting study in balance. Watching someone lose the ability to balance is one particular perspective. Um, but, you know, it's a very, very fragile environment, much more so than I think people realize. People go out to a bar to celebrate, to enjoy each other's company, um, to study the world around them without any kind of rules or regulations. Some people go to bars to lose themselves, to hide from the stress of work, the stress of home, maybe the stress of their own nagging voices in the head. I know sometimes I get those. Uh, and, and when you're looking at the situation that way, you think, well, how can there be balance? How can there be equilibrium? You have on one side of the spectrum these extreme examples of uh, self-reliant, purposeful social constructs, birthday parties, uh, graduation parties, celebrations for retirement, right? Or God help us, bachelor or bachelorette parties. I know we've all been to one of those at some point. And then on the other side of the spectrum, you have the regulars, the folks that find a chair every day or every other day in a bar. They do it out of comfort, 
They do it for constancy. They, more often than not, offer a commentary, whether you desire it or not, on volatile topics such as politics, economy. It's a lot of fun, right? Or even more volatile, uh, especially here in the South, sports. And, uh, and uh, the fashion sense sometimes of the people standing directly next to them who they think can't hear them. And you start to see all of these, you know, to use a phrase that I just heard, and it's such a great phrase, that all these whirling dervishes kind of flying through this little four-walled environment. It's a lot of integers for an equation. And the equation's different. And it's not just different every night, it's different every couple hours. It's constantly changing. It's incredibly fascinating, to, to be sure. But in a business where the linchpin of your future business is on the positive experience that your guests are having, the direct correlation to how often they will be back and what kind of energy they bring into your environment when they come back, balance is an absolute necessity. So we learn how to, in a way, control that balance for, to the best of our, our abilities. I like to consider bartenders sometimes uh, these strange breed of social chemists. I mean, let's face it, many people already refer to us as unlicensed, albeit practicing psychologists, lawyers, physicians sometimes. Uh, so why not chemistry? Let's just throw it into the mix. Constantly seeking harmony in this constantly changing environment, night after night. We're not just mixing drinks at that point, but we're actually mixing personalities. And it gets really tricky, <laughs> because inherently we all understand what someone is at face value. But as we also all know, there are a wide variance of personality traits that can make themselves very clearly known when alcohol is introduced. We, we, we have to understand, I think, socially, on any level, whether it's a bar, an office, we have to understand an important element, and that is to be aware and uh, able to recognize the basic manifestation of a personality trait in another human being. We all know the alpha male slash gal character type in any room, usually offering tremendous number of opinions and ironically never wrong in any of them, uh, which is always a treat. There's also the personality that is the yang to that yin, the subtle passive aggressive counterpoint that plays off of that exaggerated personality type, on and on. We have the inquisitors, those of us who never stop asking questions. <laughs> uh, and it's out of a true desire for knowledge and a true desire to understand things better. <clears throat> Again, that can be exacerbated with alcohol. Uh, and, and then you also have personality types where what I call the free friend. You know, there are people that are inherently comfortable around other people. And that's, it, it's one of, I think, the most sacred personality types because they're so rare anymore. We work so hard at being conscientious about what we're going to say or how we're going to interact with one another. But to have one of these adoptive friends or free friends, you quickly realize they're, they count their friends in the hundreds. They have four million followers on faith page. Or, you know, I'm sorry, Facebook. I'm, I'm not so technically savvy. I can shake a good drink, though, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> and so when you start to see these personality types, as I said, in a bar setting, of course, they're going to be amplified by alcohol. It's going to cr uh, create a little bit more of a, of a volatile scenario. But these personalities exist in any social scenario that any of us ever find ourselves in, because we all have personalities, right? 
it's important to recognize those personalities. It's important to recognize how those personalities interact with other people. I like to think, uh, you know, when we're curating these social exhibits at the bar every night, and I use the word exhibit for a reason, because I truly believe that someday, when the future, future kind are walking through the Natural History Museum, whether it be virtual or physical, in the same wing where you'll find the prehistoric man clubbing the saber-toothed tiger, there will be a scene of people gathered around a watering hole, celebrating, holding drinks, acting the fool, whether you know, it be a pub scenario or a, a bistro, but there will be a scene of humans coming together over this kind of liquid diet and just letting loose. It's, 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 uh, it's incredibly exciting, but you know, these, these personalities, they're, they, they can be curated as easily as introducing someone who has a like interest, that you know this person has a like interest and a like personality type to the person next to them. It can be that simple. Introduce, hey Joe, did you know John is really into movies? <laughs> I know you are. You're going to enjoy this conversation. Or it can be very difficult. It can be recognizing that someone is in a, an uncomfortable pitfall socially, and they need to be delivered from that. And it's a, it's a political kind of uh, dance with the, the, the scenario and helping to extract them. These people uh, that are in the uncomfortable scenario, we've all been there. We've all been there. We all have a basic instinct when we're engaging with another human being. And there are times that we get that little voice that says, nah, I don't know about this one. But we follow through anyway, because we're humans and we are resilient. Uh, but we find ourselves in these awkward scenarios. We need to be more conscientious, more aware of what our insides tell us when we interact with others. There are tons and tons of, of different kinds of people, obviously. And, you know, I make drinks for all of those kinds of people. Uh, but everybody has a different like, and so there are a million different recipes. I'd like to share a recipe with all of you today, uh, and it's for more of a social cocktail than a physical one. See if I don't screw this up. Uh, the recipe is this simple. It's a, a half measure of excitement, relatable in any social scenario. It instantly sets a tone, right? It sets a vibe. When you walk into a bar and there are two people at opposite ends of the bar speaking in hushed tones, you're instantly uncomfortable. When you walk in and there's a conviviality that's permeating the place, you're instantly disarmed. You're ready to engage. You're going to have a good time. We're going to add a shot of topical humor because obviously that can never go wrong and everybody needs a, a break from what we're dealing with and hearing all day long every day in the news or in the media. A couple dashes of conscientious perspective of oneself, understanding who you are before you impose your personality on others. <laughs> and finishing it with a float. Am I getting this all, all correctly? Oh, not even remotely. Okay. A float of complimentary observation <laughs> of the people around you. Of course, when invited. That does not mean, well, you know what that does not mean. <laughs> I call this particular recipe the welcome bar fly. And uh, as I said, it is a completely social cocktail and it can apply to any scenario. You don't need alcohol to be involved. I want to talk uh, just very briefly on where this is all going. It's going uh, in an effort to incite all of us, in a sort of call to arms, to break free of this idea that we are on our own island when we're in social settings. We're not on our own island anymore. We're on the island with everybody else. Sometimes the natives get restless. It, it's important to understand our impact on the people around us, when we're talking, when we're standing, when we're moving, when we're bumping, because <laughs> that happens. You know, I, I consider bartenders sort of keepers of the peace, and this is a warning for all of you the next time you're bellying up. We're keepers of the peace and we're silent observers of what's happening in front of us. And if we do our job correctly, you won't even notice that we're there, hopefully. Uh, but there's also something to be said about the flip side about being a bartender, and that is being immediately 
held accountable for your words and actions. We have nowhere to run. So if we start something on a negative note, chances are that's going to evolve negatively. Nobody wants to deal with that. That kind of maintained awareness, always at the forefront of our minds, I think helps us to be naturally social animals. Now, I don't need to extol on the virtues of positive energy. I don't want to get too campfire sappy on you, but just picture in your head, if you will, for a moment, a magnet. When a magnet is positively charged, it attracts other magnets or other pieces of material, and it creates a greater physical manifestation than what it was to start. A negatively charged magnet <laughs> repels. Big social corollary there. We're like magnets, um, and hence the term magnetism, although I've refrained from using the animal word. Um, when we realize what we say and what we do profoundly changes the scenario for the people around us, we become empowered. We become powerful. Awareness is power. Now, do we choose to use that power positively or negatively? It's something to always be thinking about, always be conscientious about. I'm going to tell a real quick story here because it's hilarious, so just bear with me. There's this guy who comes in all the time with his two sons, seven-ish, 14-ish. They sit at the bar. These kids are enamored with the world of the restaurant. They, they know recipes. They know food. They know drink recipes. Half the time, I have to refer to them for the drink recipe that I'm about to make somebody else. They're magnets, and they're really fun to have around. One time, this dad and his sons are sitting at the bar. There's some folks next to him, and in walks this group of three with the big, loud, boisterous guy instantly getting involved in everyone's business at the bar. What are you drinking? Ugh, you shouldn't be drinking that. You should be drinking this. I'll tell you how it's made, blah, 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 blah. Getting in everybody's face. And this kid is watching him, and he says, hey, you know, you should probably open a bar. But if you do, use the right recipes, because you just totally misjudged the calculation of your aviation by a half ounce. And he went on and on, and this guy just deflated, you know? <laughs> it was amazing. I didn't have to do anything. And so there's a child that can recognize that basic understanding of, hey, this guy's making everybody uncomfortable. I want to stop that. I want to help out. He did it. And it was amazing. I want to challenge you real quick. After this, when we go to the reception, a little exercise. Work with each other. Try to figure out what's going to positively benefit the people around you in conversation. Okay? In conclusion, a good drink is well-balanced and tasty. <laughs> <That's> a... <laughs>